most people don't know that before there was something about Mary with Matt Dillon and um, is it Ben Stiller and oh, I forget her name anyway um, famous actress because there was something about Mary in, um, I think Mary Poppins, or I could be wrong. There was a Dick, a Dick Van Dyke film, anyway. And uh, da -da -da -da, there's something about Mary, da -da 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 -da, right? And he's this kind of, you know, work neck type of dude. Really nice, you know. But I mean, it's like something about Mary, right? <laughs> Just kind of interesting. But I mentioned that. I found a. Uh, Really nice Dallasite that replaces one I gave to some crotchety little man. It's kind of this half half heart situation. And uh, kind of half agate, half whatever. It's nice and rugged. It's not as dainty as the other one. I found a little smaller. And this one's kind of a nice size, kind of like you can wear it around your neck. And it's got a beautiful smile, like a sense of self satisfaction, unlike any I've known before. <laughs> so, um, and then there was another one I liked. I thought it was quite cool. I just picked up too. It's very greenish sort of shield, isn't it? Look at that beautiful greenish shield. And uh, kind of like a little turret with a window. I like that. So I'm putting all these over here. I might bring this one home. I'm not sure. Um, all right. So a little recording here. And then we head home. Thank you very much. Let's have some water. I did take those tie little about a half hour ago. So. They'll be kicking in in a half hour. The last of my water. I keep smelling like eucalyptus or something in the air. Like, oh. there. Do I have such thing as a coffee? Yes. Okay. that there's a blue heron it's very medicinal though you know between my headache and the Tylenol it's like there's something really sort of astringent if that's the way it <sighs> you know I felt that way sometimes I've had a couple I don't know if I'd call it low grade maybe and for the sake of other people who might have not gotten away as easily as I did but migraines you know in this sense the intensity seems to be manageable if I go outside and just sit by myself for like three hours like out here and just listen to the wind of birds and just you know a nice cool shady place sip a little water you know I don't have to smoke any weed and I just wait it's like because like when I get them it's like you know two three three hours, four hours, but at least they're going to subside. So you're just sort of waiting for that moment. And usually I can predict the hour, you know. And today, like the last few days, I just know waking or sleeping is a tension in my body, a tension in the air. And, um, walking to and fro the building over the last few days, I just like, I pick it up around me. And it's like, okay, this isn't good. So we'll just give it... If it's had anything that's had any effect, whatever it's people, environment, at least it runs its course. You know, it doesn't stay like, eh, eh. but if it's coming and going a lot, then yeah, I mean, we may have to move. Humans go through waves. If there's been a kind of shock and it means what I think it means about my environment, then I, I might have to expect my mom and I that we're going to just kind of come down with the, the hoo boos every now and then. Um, because along the way, I've checked the mental field around me. And uh, it's like, and there's ways of doing that. You know, if you have something like psychically, my, my skills basically are on a need basis, you know, and they're never something I could really explain to someone, but, and they're not everything. And it's good that they're not, they're kind of ethereal, you know, and I'm able to sort of hold things at an ethereal level so that they don't become anything else, you know, but, and suffering, if not from them, then from something else which you know I can sort of picture in my mind that probably has something to do with it but not everything you know just take a breath <sighs> without getting into it like because I'm at a I'm sort of at a distance from it. what I really is is disconnecting <sighs> just maybe even my own depression yeah. 
it's weird I started the day, you know, talking about white people disconnecting or being too disconnected, but it's also something that I need to do sometimes. But all the time that I have by myself, I'm still finding like, yeah, sometimes that's what you need to do. Just get a get a stone and be like, I hereby reverse repel. I do, I hereby reverse and repel by all the vows and vows of the oaths I've shared with nature in my own blood and bones. And all that every energy, good or evil, sound and unsound, angry or joyful, should go by nature's own divine intelligence to the strength, long life and health of my mother and father. Inasmuch as it is a prerogative of my family to need as, as much from each other, <laughs> this is something that as bothered or unbothered as our family has been, I would make my labors and woes about finding something that can bring a restorative value to, you know, anything that can touch my blood and bones is something I can add to my labors by this spell and this earth and the vows and vows of the oaths my flesh and bones have formed by the grace of the earth and walking among and taking the air and suffering what not that I have suffered. And mostly in the unerring um, sort of injustice that I feel, in the unerring kind of, you know, attentions perhaps, which I receive rightly or not from the people around me in my travels. You know, um, some of a, you know, fine, some not. Um, and the ones that are not, are ones that I just can't tolerate anymore. <laughs> you know, that's the reason I'm out here. You know, I just, I can't, I can't do it. I, I get sensitive enough in my way of life that I become way too sensitive to certain types of human energy. And so I would reverse and repel, you know, doing no harm. In the name of Satan, you know, sorry. And by the crown which the Eternal Mother places through the pentagram and through the celestial face of the Father of the North and of the celestial field and of the organs and spheres of the heavens and the earth. And that eternal spring which ring on ring resounds through all things, that all things can be made, all things can be made sound. So say at the soul of man, so say at the soul of man, so say at the soul of man. They'll say. Now, we live out these spells, or I do, and then, you know, it doesn't, it's not a controlling of sequences of reality, it's, you know, in some sense, I guess in parlance, a statement of intention, and watching and being mindful of your responsibility of that statement, going through changes inwardly, outwardly. And, being, and knowing that you'll be guided through that to bring about a positive result. And I've done that spell before over the last few weeks, and I'm doing it again. Arrest, repel, repulse. Take me away from. You know, the best things that can happen between you and whatever and whomever happens to be possessed of this enemy-like impact on us can be something that's just gone. I can look out here and think of people that have stalked me in the estuary that don't anymore. I look over there, some days when I was new to this walking thing, I'd be like, I'd look over there and go, that dude is so angry at me, I won't be able to go back there for a month, you know? Someone just, you know, posturing in some weird way that they find, because such people can always find their way to do that when they have enough time around me, has been gently repulsed and now has gone into a kind of a rage mode. Because once they get far enough and you say no, that's exactly what you might expect as a result. Just like if you were dealing with a drug addict. Which is why, at least for me, you know, I can't always do it, but I know and I take responsibility when I'm not able to, which is a lot with challenged people. You have what people do that are healthier than me is you clear with your boundaries right away. Clear with your boundaries right away. You don't even begin with such people. The way you like you say, oh, no, that's, you know, thank you. No crazy over here. <laughs> you know? The very reason we walk stoically or look down when we walk down the street, because whether anyone likes it or not, we might not be into anything today, let alone whatever this person has to offer, you know. But around here, if I do that, right, if I do that, right, even just do that, you know, that's not always enough for people. Women are either out of fear or not, will sometimes stand and look and wait for me to look at them or figure out, you know, 
and that's fine. Like maybe waiting to see which way I'm going. I don't know. But I think, you know, it's good that they have dogs, as they often do, because it's like they can sort of futz around them. And like a lot of dog owners, particularly women that I passed, do have a certain amount of futzing that they go into. You know, futzing. Like it's okay, dildo, or whatever. It's okay, Bilbo. <laughs> Oh no, now, now. Even if the dog's not futzing, they'll be like, it's okay. <laughs> and they're kind of reassuring themselves at the dog at the same time. And that's, you know, hey, come on. That's fine. That's totally fair game. Dogs, animals, you know, come on. You're just kind of like, like chickens going, you know, the lady's keeping everything in check, right? Because you're walking by and you're kind of like the fox, right? You know, that's fine. Especially with feminine energy doesn't have to be that way and so a man might find like that's not going to happen every time so it's like Ooh, you know it's like oh you know cluck, cluck, cluck. maybe they want to cluck with you <laughs> maybe they they want the fox today you're foxy <laughs> you don't know so i'm just kind of like Ooh, they can't handle it anymore i don't even like changing stations on the radio let alone dealing with different women it's like it's a different song it's a different station and yet sometimes the same old one every time the same commercials the same music you know isn't it ironic <laughs> don't you think <laughs> next thing you know you're moving to tampon bay florida because you met a woman with menstrual cramps and a speech impediment <laughs> find an apple without using your hands <laughs> I'll put you on a stage with a banjo and see what happens <laughs> take your take your take your take your hey take your I said take your I had enough, so I say, take your, 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 everybody take your, take your down, take your down, take your down, dun 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 dun, take your down. We take this down, mm, mm. we take this down just like we take it down. -na 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 -na. So, yeah. I, you get songs in your head, right? Sometimes the heads of radios are, just beat it, beat it. Why did I think this song was so fantastic? <laughs> it's just so easy to make millions of bucks. Just say the same word over and over. Just beat it. I wonder if you tried like just mix it or just blow it. Just tap it. Just rub it. Just stroke it gently. <laughs> just stroke it gently. You know, and he's like, beat it. It's like a beat, and you're beating it, and it's beating you, and you're beating as one. <laughs> and then there's the moonwalk. Didn't that just seal the deal with Michael Jackson? If you were my age, the moonwalk. I'm like, the moonwalk. It's a walk. It's what you would do on the moon. No, it's not, but that's okay. He's moving forward. He's going back. It's confusing. <laughs> it should be the confusing walk. In fact, where would you be if the moonwalk was the normal walk of the day? Not on the moon. Probably at a Michael Jackson concert <laughs> or in the 1980s. Right? Then, if that's the moonwalk, then my neighborhood was the moon. <laughs> and we done landed there again, thanks to that beautiful black man. <laughs> he took us back to the moon. He we beat it. We walked upon the moon. Everyone could walk on the moon with Michael Jackson. Billy Jean was not his lover. It's important to, important to and, uh, and Macaulay Culkin was not his lover. <laughs> and Santa Claus is not making a booty call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
tap on the window. Hey, it's Santa. Rain. You watch yourself. You may not need presents from me anymore, but I see you when you're making YouTube videos and when you're sleeping and when you're not. Still keep eye on you. Right? You don't want to grow up. You're a Toys R Us kid. We're just kind of like a dinosaur. A Toys R Us. I'm a Toys R Us. I'm a child who's a dinosaur called a Toys R Us. Something that's like already like a fossil made out of plastic that people whose brains will never develop want to play with because if they don't get that shot of intoxicating endorphins on Christmas morning, you know, they're going to blame their parents for the rest of their guilt-ridden lives. A Toyosaurus. Feared by all mankind. <sighs> I eat toys. I become a toy. You know, sex toys are the number one sold thing in Walmart uh, online in North America. I mean... I just got this from Amazon. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like a toy. I wonder if Jesus had toys. I wonder what toys Jesus, like, you know, like, some, probably something that had, like, blood oozing out of it, you know, with a cross and flames. <laughs> it's like, he obviously got used to that at an early age. That's what I would say. He would get his first stake at the age of three, a hammer at the age of four. He'd practice on himself. They would tell doctors that it was just stigmata. And they're like, what is that? You'll see one day. <laughs> These are wounds that look like you banged a nine-inch nail into your tibia. But now you're telling me that it's just symbolic of a man who needed to die. His father required. He gained a pass because the soul needed to save its ass. Boom, boom, boom. Just beat it. Beat it. Beat it like you really mean. <laughs> beat the rap, children. Beat the rap. This is a PSA. If you ever get the rap, you beat that rap. By calling 1-800-GET-ME-A-LAWYER. Or maybe just Cindy Lauper. Because girls just want to have... That's all they really want. <laughs> really, a girl just wants to have fun. Seriously, is that true? And Bette Midler and Mick Jagger can't get any satisfaction. Did you hear the set of lungs on that woman? In Beaches? Yeah, I love Bette Midler. That is one buoyant human being. <laughs> they should change out Boss Hog on that Tuesday <laughs> Ezra for Bette Midler. They could have had totally different plots. They could have cleaned that town up. It would have been a musical. You know, Daisy in her ripped short jeans shorts, you know, she'd be off to one side. Bette Midler would have everyone singing. Daisy has everyone masturbating. Which one do you think will last longer? <laughs> Into the annals of time. <laughs> She'd be like, come on, Daisy. Stop bending over for those photographers. Put on some pants. We're going to sing like we mean it. <laughs> you know? Ah, with an ass like that. Who wants to be the shibbit? <laughs> <laughs> I just made up a Jewish word. It's like, this shibit. It's a shibituary. <laughs> it's when I no longer can get anyone's attention because Daisy shows up in her beautiful shorts and her brothers jumping in and out of the General Lee because the doors don't open. It's a gimmick, but it works. They're young and they're used to stuffing themselves in and out <laughs> of, you know, a very, very hot machine. <laughs> together at the same time <laughs> but not their sister <laughs> okay all right all right this is family television in fact daisy is never seen really fornicating in any way whatsoever as far as i know she just hangs out at the farm waving to them when they go and smiling at them when they come back <laughs> for all we know the 
Daisy Duke is no different <laughs> than a Labrador Retriever or something. <laughs> but wow, if it became a beautiful woman. <laughs> and I think all dog lovers would appreciate that comparison. <laughs> Daisy Duke lovers, <laughs> maybe not so much. <laughs> but then again, you know, it lends things to the realm of the doggy style a little more in a G-rated manner. She waves in doggy style. She knows everything doggy style. <laughs> you know, it's like instead of Gangnam style, it's like Daisy style. <laughs> like her style. <laughs> Happy, friendly, but also your sister. <laughs> I wore shorts like that to the beach once and some drunk white woman told me to go change my shorts. <laughs> Talk about the injustice. Sure, it doesn't compare to misogynistic rape for 550 years, but still, very, very sweet agony indeed.